almost Halloween. We're getting closer and closer. So the looks that I'm doing are basically ones that you don't really have to go out and get anything for. You can just kind of do. If you're a last minute person like I am a lot of the time, these kind of things are helpful. So I've done this purely using stuff that I've just got at home makeup wise and I haven't had to get anything in to do it. So that was kind of the idea behind it. Plus porcelain dolls are creepy as hell. They shouldn't be allowed. They should all be barred, gone, forever. So, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. Okay, guys. So, to start off with this look, I basically add a little mixture of white face paint and a little bit of foundation. If you don't have white face paint, you can easily just get a really pale foundation, but you just want your skin to be quite pale and lifeless almost um but obviously not as white as if you were doing some kind of ghost or skull makeup i actually ended up adding an extra layer of foundation after i did this step because i just felt it was a little bit too white and i couldn't quite perfect the makeup up how i wanted it It's literally just a case of having a play with it and seeing how you feel about the look, if you want it to be further or if you want it to be a bit more natural looking. Take your time. <laughs> I just used a large foundation brush to spread it around because it seemed a lot quicker. The only problem with this is that if you want to re go over an area, it can drag away some of the product, so you're better to apply it a bit thicker initially than keep going over it, which is why I ended up putting a layer of foundation on afterwards. Depending on what costume you're going to be wearing with it, you might want to do your neck and chest a little bit, but I was quite happy just doing the face for today. I'd also recommend going over your eyebrows because if you're like me and you've got quite dark eyebrows, you don't necessarily want them showing through. Don't forget to do your ears as well, because I did one and almost forgot to do the other. From a distance it looks quite even, but up close you can really see where I'd gone over areas. So this is again why I ended up with the extra layer of makeup on top of it. Yep, there's the ear. <laughs> I put a little bit of foundation on my hand and I tried sponging it on but again I was having problems with the white sort of smudging out so I ended up just doing it by hand. It was a lot quicker and made a much more even finish on it. Like I say, just apply another layer of foundation just to finish it off. With all that white underneath, it will create like a sort of doll-like 
finish. By using your hands you're able to sort of move around the face paint and the makeup so that you can get a much more even coverage. It just seems to work a bit better than using a sponge but it's completely up to you how you do this. Somehow, I don't know why I remind myself of the girl from the grudge at <laughs> this stage. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to end up with a lot of this on your hands, so it was just easier to sort of remove it when I was going to be playing around with my eyes and everywhere else. So you then want to sort of set all your face paint and foundation so I'm just using a colour corrector one which has got a slightly pinky tone to it so again it's sort of you're still looking dull like but it adds a little bit of colour back in there as well you're going to do this a couple of times just to make sure everything sort of sits right with the face paints it can be quite sticky that's one thing I found so putting the powder on definitely helped take that edge off it was really quite smooth in the end You can see by how much I'm putting on how sticky it was actually feeling. It took quite a while to get that edge off, which is why I would probably recommend using a lighter foundation rather than the face paints to get this look. do my contouring I use again the grey because I just feel it adds a really good shadow effect. With it being dull light you want to cut it along your cheek and as you smile follow that curve around and that will give you the sort of dull light cheeks. Blend it out key to this is blending so it just looks like it's there rather than really forced. So again cut along the actual edge of your cheek and smile and follow your natural curves on your cheeks. You want to blend up and away from your face to get the most realistic and most sunken in effect. It looks quite dark here but as you add more to it it just looks a bit more unnoticeable. Go ahead and do your temples as well anywhere you would normally do your contouring you don't want your face to look flat. Again, keep blending it, that's the key to this look, is just blend it out and make it sink in. So 
Once you've done that, you want to go ahead and set that with your powder again. It just helps level it all out a little bit more. You don't necessarily have to do your whole face, just the areas where you've added any contouring will help. So on the eyes, I'm taking the dark grey again and I'm filling it underneath my eye and literally on the curve of my eyeball. You're doing this all by touch so that the shape doesn't look too strange. You want it to look a bit more realistic. I then went in and filled my eyelid with a bit of black eyeshadow, but it just wasn't getting dark enough for me, so I actually ended up changing up how I did this, but it did create a good base layer. This is just basically creating this sunken in look as though your eyes are a lot further set back than they actually are. Once you've got the shape you want, you want to sort of blend it out. You don't want it to be too perfect because um, you, you do want to look like a broken up doll. <laughs> the lighting is absolutely shocking because now it's winter time. It gets dark really quick so I apologise for the lighting on this video. So you want to get yourself a thin brush, something like a normal artist brush or a thin eyeliner brush, whatever you feel more comfortable using to create the actual cracks on your face is ideal. As you can see, I'm not the most organised of people, so I can lose my tools very easily. So before I decided to add the cracks I thought it would be easier to add some blush now. So you want a really pinky colour, you don't want it to be sort of subtle. Whenever you see these old dolls they always have really pink cheeks. And again blend it out. Taking some black gel eyeliner, I actually ended up using an eyeliner brush because as I'd put the main brush in to the found into the foundation, into the gel eyeliner, it sort of split apart too much and I didn't feel I could do what I wanted to do properly. So I reverted back to my eyeliner pencil. So to create the actual cracks, what you want to do is really lightly just place them all over your face wherever you want. You can use a reference photo if you don't feel comfortable just freehanding it. But you want varying cracks along your face with really thin lines. And then it doesn't matter if you get some thicker areas because some cracks are going to be deeper than others. If you're doing your neck and chest, I would recommend that you do it on there as well, just to keep the look a bit more complete. So it was at this point, now that I've sort of mapped out a few thin ones, you want to pick some areas that look like it's a deeper crack and bits have fallen out. So you want to fill it in solid black. 
which creates the sort of whole effect. I definitely recommend starting smaller and building up. It's a lot easier to sort of get that effect looking really quite real. So I decided I wanted to crack on the forehead because if ever you drop a doll, it's normally on its face. So I'm thinking on the forehead is a really good spot for a crack. And as you can see, I'm dragging it along and thinning it out as I go and doing little chains off it so that it's not just a perfectly straight line. Good job, out of shot. <laughs> so I decided at this point I was going to line my waterline, just darken it up a bit. So here you can see I'm making one of the bigger cracks for that's a bit more visible. And I went for a diamond shape and just sort of made little trails off it, thinning out in different places at different thicknesses as well, so it looks a bit more authentic. I was quite happy with just those sort of ones that were marked off. You can go further with it, add more, add less, entirely up to you. Like I say, you can do it freehand or you can get a picture and reference from that. I then decided it'd be quite cool that if I could have the effect carried out so that when photos were taken and your eyes were closed, it would look as though the eye sockets were empty as well. So to do that, I actually just went over my actual eyelid with black gel eyeliner. I didn't really design a shape, I literally just went with how it felt on my eye so that I was just over the edge of the eyeball almost. I just feel it pulls it all together a little bit creepier. <laughs> You could as well if you really wanted to add false eyelashes but I don't think that would really work if you were going for the closed eye effect like I have. But if you're just doing general doll with normal eyes then I'd go ahead and add some big false eyelashes because it just pull that look together even more. channeling my inner doll right now. <laughs> I decided that my lips looked a little bit pale so I just took one of my pink lip liners, it's the bourgeois one, and I put a few dots on, dots on my lips and spread it out so it was a really pale tone rather than a really vibrant pink and I think that worked really well. Because again when you see these dolls they've got really white faces, bright pink cheeks and really pink lips so I just felt that pulled it together that little bit more. For the final step I took a bit of highlighter powder and I just wanted to add a little bit of shine because I'd had all the powder before it was very smooth so by adding the highlighter it just adds that little bit of shine that you get off a doll so you want to do the high points like your cheeks, your forehead and your nose. It just gives the doll look a little bit of a shine. You 
you can finish this off by either if you've got really short hair you can stick a wig on and plait it or just have it down I quite like the idea of pigtails because again a lot of these dolls have them and if they didn't then I knew when I was little I pretty much practiced on my dolls plaiting so I went ahead and added some little plaits at the side again you don't want this to be perfect you sort of want it to be a little bit messed up because you want to look like an like an old doll that's just been found in some abandoned warehouse somewhere <laughs> You can really play with this, you could have high pigtails, you could really mess your hair up and just go crazy with it. There's so many options, it's all down to what you fancy doing. To me, when I think of doll, I think of plaits, so that's what I went for. Yeah, I'm a bit of a perfectionist so I realised that one was sort of a bit more visible from the front view and the first one I did was a bit further back how I would normally do it so I just pulled it forward a bit more And there you have it, you have your very own creepy doll face. You can go as creepy with this as you like, you could go as far as adding blood to it if you really wanted to, but I was just happy with it as it was. Hope you enjoyed it guys, thanks for watching.